Stability AI has a few growing pains. In the recent weeks, they found themselves in multiple controversies and we're going to look at them in detail today. Yahoo Finance writes, Stability AI, the startup behind Stable Diffusion, raises 101 million US dollars. Now I've done previously a video on Stable Diffusion, which is a new text to image model that has been released open source, free for everyone to access and use. And I've done a video on the great things that people build and are still building with it. It's absolutely amazing the creativity that comes out of people when you just give them stuff. And I've also done an interview with Ahmad Mustak, the founder of Stability AI, where he shared his opinions and an approach to sharing more. So according to him, Stability AI's goal is to be what OpenAI was supposed to be. These are my words, not his. Uh, OpenAI was supposed to be this decentralized, collaborative thing where everything is open and AI is made accessible to everyone. And it's ended up to be an API provider that you can, you know, call for money. Now, Stability AI has made the first step in releasing Stable Diffusion to the world open. And as I said, it's unleashed a big part of creativity. However, in recent weeks, they found themselves at the center of multiple controversies. So today we're going to go over four different instances of these controversies. First, Stability takes over the subreddit that's community led and the Discord server that's community led kicking out all other mods. Second, Stability AI goes after a GitHub user that provides an alternative web UI to theirs and accuse them of stealing some code. But the truth is actually no, they stole code from him first or both actually took code from somewhere else. It's kind of a mess. Third, Stability issues a takedown notice for a model on the Hugging Face Hub that they claim is their own intellectual property, namely Stable Diffusion version 1.5. And later, they take back that takedown notice. And lastly, their CIO releases a public statement about how they think about open sourcing models. And in my opinion, it's very, very scary statement. So we're going to go into these things in detail. As always, uh, let me know what you think. As with all of these things, it's very hard to actually research all of what happened. And there are conflicting accounts of things and conflicting interpretations. So uh, take what I say with a grain of salt, look at the stuff yourself and come to your own conclusions. So first of all, we have a story from Analytics India Mag that says when Stability AI went rogue on Reddit Rampage. A couple of days ago, Stability AI infiltrated the Stable Diffusion community, banned some of the users, kicked out the moderators and took over the subreddit. This is some, you know, punji headline. And actually, you know, this is this is my thumbnail. <laughs> Source Reddit. I, I guess I've posted it on Reddit. I'm not sure, but I guess the com it's a compliment since uh, it's a good thumbnail. Well, this all started with posts on Reddit from former moderators saying, hello, I'm an ex-moderator of the subreddit and Discord, and I've been here since the beginning. This subreddit was intended to be unofficial and run by the community. Two weeks ago, the first moderator was tricked into giving control of the subreddit and transferred to stability. Stability meaning the company Stability AI. All the moderators were also removed from here and even the one who created the subreddit was kicked out of the team and banned. Now this raised some eyebrows. We also have this statement from another moderator saying mod here my side of the story. They say they are on very good terms with stability. They've done a lot for them but they say I just don't see why I would hide what I know for any longer. They say they were here from the beginning 50 subscribers to the subreddit. They asked whether they could help moderate. From then on there were like like two moderators of this subreddit. They also made a Discord server and both of these things quickly exploded as Stable Diffusion became burst into the mainstream. At one point, they say official stability staff came in, clearly showed their interest in making the Discord official. So this was both the Discord and the subreddit were unofficial, were just run by fans. And all of a sudden, stability comes in and says, well, that's a cool community. You know, can we essentially make this our official Discord server. So far, so good. This happens. So 
the real inflection point seemed to be when they set the stable diffusion beta program, so where people could actually try out the model on Discord, would be run on my Discord server. The Discord server quickly grew to 50k members, they even got the vanity link, and then they say something like, a few days after which my server got the verified badge that Discord gives to official servers. Weird, I thought, since I, the owner of the server, never asked for the badge and am not officially affiliated with stability. I can only imagine Emad asked for it while they were conversing with Discord. Pure speculation though. So now this unofficial Discord that has been sort of kind of made official by the stability staff, but was still owned by a non-stability member, is now given sort of the verified badge. Like this is like the blue check mark on Twitter. This is the official server for stable diffusion or for stability. Yeah, I guess stable diffusion is more accurate. The story goes on saying mere days later, it became clear that PR, public relations, I guess, did not want me to hold a position that made me falsely seem like stability staff. I understood and informed them I'd be fine with giving away ownership, but that not being conventionally possible since the server has the verified badge now. So once the server is verified, you can't just transfer the server to someone else. This is to to prevent abuse. Now I would guess the normal way to now transfer the server would be something like to go to Discord and to ask them, hey, could I transfer that server to these people? Yes, I verify, I really want to do this, I verify. They are the true owners of Stability AI, the brand for which this Discord server is the official Discord server, yada, yada, yada. However, that did not happen. A few days later, I wake up to see I no longer own the Discord server. Fact, I never reached out to Discord and Discord never Ever reached out to me. So apparently Discord just kind of transferred the server. I guess they were in contact with Stability and Stability made it appear like the two things are closer than they were. Obviously, this person was clearly willing to give up the server and I guess Stability communicated that to Discord, but Discord just didn't follow their process of actually asking the person, hey, do you really want to do that? So they just kind of took away the server from him and handed it over. Not that much of a big deal, but like a bit scary, right? So apparently later the ownership was transferred back and someone that we can assume that is from Stability called Cyberbully said, the ownership has been transferred to you following the post on Reddit, since it was a big issue for you, you can now do the transfer to Imad yourself. And also a message from Discord itself saying, yes, indeed, there was a mix up and they should have come to this person and asked them whether they really wanted to transfer the Discord and not just take it away from them. So it's kind of unclear whether Discord themselves found that they've screwed up and then the cyber bully person just kind of reacted to that because it just says has been transferred to you or whether they've actually initiated it. To be honest, this also is a, is like a bit passive aggressive. It's not like we're sorry, we clearly screwed up. It's more like, well, uh, since you made a Reddit post and, you know, since this is a big issue, it's actually a small issue, but since to you, you know, you make a big deal out of it, fine diva, right? You can now transfer it yourself. It's very much the attitude of like, oh, come on, it's not such a big deal. Like, it, it kind of is a big deal. There's two levels here, right? Level one, screw up happened probably by Discord. Okay, we can, we, we get it, right? Like, this stuff happens. But level two is sort of the, the tone, which I don't think is quite appropriate to to be like uh, this top down. And then apparently later without any doing at all, they've taken the Discord server away again, saying, hi all, apologies for this, we've transferred ownership back to Imad and are revisiting our process of transferring ownership to ensure this does not happen again. All in all, it seems pretty clear the Discord server should have transferred ownership in one way or another. The process was a bit dirty and uh, Cyberbully was just kind of being a dick. But the story doesn't end there. Moving to the subreddit, this mod says, I had taken ownership of the subreddit a week before since Stability wanted someone more trustworthy to hold that position. Then, however, someone from Stability's security department contacted me and asked me to transfer ownership to actual Stability staff. Given Stability has been awesome to me so far and promising me great opportunities in the future, I complied. Did they? <laughs> like, 
it would be funny if they just used that exact wording, like great opportunities await you, young lad. I guess they, they've saying, you know, we can do something for you in the future. You've been pretty cool uh, administrating this as a volunteer. They say promising the original owner and other mods to retain a mod position. They never followed through with that and only invited one person and me back as a mod without giving them full permissions. That's how we arrive at the present day. I did try to warn them about holding corporate motivated positions on a sub that did not seem to phase them though. So that's where the sentence before came in where they say they tricked someone into giving them permissions. They essentially came in and said, hey, um, we are, you know, the real deal. We would like to administrate this subreddit that is about us, even though Reddit is sort of supposed to be in this sort of fan mode. So subreddits are supposed to be unaffiliated with the thing they're about because it's supposed to be community led. But you know, you can all decide that for yourself. Essentially, they came in and said, we would like to take control here. That's okay. The person said, yes, you're very cool. That's okay. If you know, we can stay on as moderators and the other moderators too. They said yes. And then they just didn't. So people got a bit upset about these things, but you know, always remember there's probably always two sides, at least two sides to every story. There is a Discord message from Emad himself saying, just getting information now as catching up. Seems like we wanted to give mods non-public data. So there was an NDA system in place and some mods say yay, some mods say nay, and he doesn't exactly know what's going on so far. On top of that, there's also something that I just I just heard. Okay, I've, I, I don't have a way to confirm this this, but the, the person, the moderator we just heard from is a minor, not uh, of legal age right now. That That's not the, the rumor. The rumor is that then at some point they actually got on payroll of stability so that they would count as an employee, so that they would fall sort of under employee secrecy and stuff. I don't know. Again, I don't know what happened. What is public is the fact that the moderators were switched out. The moderators that were swapped in, they did not have long lasting Reddit accounts, they did not have experience as moderators. And it very much seemed like there was some sort of switcheroo happening and promises made that were then not fulfilled. Now all of this does have a bit of a happy end as David Ha actually joined Stability AI as the head of strategy. You may know David Ha also from his username Hardmaru on Reddit and Twitter. He's very active. He always has the absolute best prompts for text to image models. I very much enjoy following him. And he is from what I can tell a very straightforward and trustworthy person. So I'm very happy that someone like this is in a leading role in such a, a kind of new and wild company. So he himself actually on his first day of work or his second day of work posted a post in the Stable Diffusion subreddit saying, yes, actually this should go back to the community. He says, Stability AI is a young company, needs to learn how to engage on social media. He personally joined the sub earlier this year. He believes that Stable Diffusion should be independent and run by the community. Stability AI will give up all control of this sub including mod privileges. This company is built around our community and want to keep it that way. Going forward, we will engage with this community as regular users when we respond to concerns, inquiries, or make new announcements. And so ownership was transferred back to the original moderators after this. As for the Discord server, I believe they are still in control of that, which I guess is fine since it is actually the official Discord server. So where does that leave us? It, with all of these stories, you can interpret it in many different ways. On one end of the spectrum, which is very much where I fall, I think what happened is that Stability AI has just kind of exploded in recent years. They have, or years, days, <laughs> weeks, right? They have just gotten so much publicity at once. They have had to hire in people. They've had to react fast to things. And probably the culture in this company is also the sort of decentralized way that they feel the entire AI world should run. So I'm going to guess that a lot of people with instability have gotten sort of a lot of freedom and power very, very quickly. 
and sort of the instructions to just make things happen and, and do things and decide for yourself and be kind of a pirate and a bit radical, right? And therefore, quick, rash decisions were made, which were probably not in the interest of the company or the community if they had thought longer about it. So I'm very much at the end of the spectrum that says that these are essentially growing pains mixed in a few people that don't really have experience with the kind of power and the kind of reach that they have right now. On the other end of the spectrum, you can always, of course, say that this is an evil company. It's been an evil company from the start. They're looking to make money. They're looking to control everything. Can't tell you which one is the case. I'm just tending towards one end of the spectrum, which brings us to the next bit of drama, which is Automatic's web UI. So Automatic 1111 is a person, username on GitHub, on Reddit, on 4chan, I believe, and they made a web UI for Stable Diffusion, an alternative to the Dream Studio that is the official web UI by Stability AI. And this is the most extensive alternative web UI, and a lot of people have been using Automatic's web UI for doing things really cool. It's just open. You can just download it. Now, there are some initial issues with this. As you can see right here, there is not really a license to it. So even though it's kind of open, it's not really open source, at least not in a sense where we would actually know how we could use this stuff. But in any case, uh, here is a showcase. You can do lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff. So Automatic seem to just have been scouring the internet for things to do with these diffusion models and then incorporating them more and more and more into the web UI. And it ended up with a lot of features being very usable and therefore a lot of people used it. Now what happens from here is a bit shady and unclear. I've tried to piece together the timeline and what was very helpful are some of the summary posts that exist on Reddit. For example, in Out of the Loop, the user Ttop E has a lengthy post on what happened. And so does the user Symesboy on the Stable Diffusion subreddit. They have sort of a step-by-step -step breakdown. A good point to dive in are a set of Discord messages apparently from someone named Ether that is from Stability AI, supposedly, at least from the Stable Diffusion Discord server that texted to Automatic, hello, I'm reaching out to you from the Stable Diffusion server in regard to the recent novel AI leaks. Now, these leaks have been leaking proprietary material of this company, Novel AI. Novel AI is a company that is in some way connected to Stability AI. Either they're just backed by them with computers they get like early access to their systems and things like this. So these two are sort of connected stability and novel AI. Now, novel AI had apparently been building some features as closed source features. This is cool. You can do this. Now, this had been leaked. There's been an exploit that allowed hackers to gain access to proprietary material by Novel AI. Specifically, they have leaked out some model that Novel AI has been developing that was then passed around the internet. Now, Automatic, given that they have a web UI that a lot of people use, rushed to make the web UI compatible with the leaked model. So they didn't just incorporate the leaked model or, you know, hacked it themselves. I guess who knows, but there's no proof they hacked it themselves. They simply made their web UI compatible with that. Now, in order to make that compatible, they obviously also had to incorporate some code. Now, there are multiple different layers here, but let's go on with the messages. It has come to our attention that some of your recent commits contain code that could have only been written by looking at leaked proprietary code confirmed by a core developer who had worked on that code. We're asking you to please remove any recent additions containing that code from your repository, given that this data has been unlawfully leaked on 4chan and is not intended to be open source. We cannot align with these actions and have had to remove your stable society role within the server. Thank you. Automatic replies to this. The code has been written by me from scratch. Loading VAE is basics of basics and hyper networks is also a technique that has been demonstrated long ago. I do not see why I should remove those just because leaked code exists. If you want to remove me from your roles, you're free to do so. Hello, by the way. <laughs> by the way.
<laughs> Hello again, after review and discussion with our team, I've made the decision to ban you from the Stable Diffusion server on the grounds of unethical community participation around the recent novel AI leaks. Sure, whatever. All right, so now it sounds like proprietary code from novel AI has been found in Automatic's repository and they asked him to remove that. Now, in fact, there is a tiny bit of truth to that as Automatic themselves say right here from line 44 to line 55 is copied verbatim from the novel AI code base. However, it's just dead code. It's been there for a total of two commits and it was removed after that and it still runs everything as said. They didn't actually refer to these lines of code when they accused them of stealing code. But they refer to other lines of code. Now comes the kicker. This summary post states, however, it was soon pointed out that this code, the one they accused Automatic of stealing, predated Novel AI's implementation and was open source, making Automatic innocent of thievery. It was then pointed out that Novel AI was using code taken from Automatic that was not open source, making them the actual thieves in this situation. So they started out accusing Automatic of stealing their code. Turns Turns out they've actually both taken that code from some open source repository. And since Automatic doesn't have any sort of open source license, technically the code from the web UI isn't open source and they've actually taken code from that repository. And yeah, so ultimately they're in violation of the license. They blamed it on an intern. However, the poll of this code on GitHub had the name of a senior programmer within Novel AI casting doubts on the it was an intern excuse. Oh, it was an intern. Of course, of course it was an intern. Sure. Sure, sure. I mean, even if it was an intern, right? They are out there attacking an like an independent volunteer creator that sort of keeps half of the stable diffusion interactions of the world going. I guess like a paid intern is still laden with more responsibility than some sort of volunteer that just puts their stuff on GitHub. Yet they have no problem attacking that volunteer. Yet when it comes to them, it's like, oh, ah, oh, it was an in oh, ah, an in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Automatic was exiled from the Discord server, removed from the pinned guide on the Stable Diffusion subreddit. I'm gonna guess that's when the uh, company still had control over it and just kind of been treated at the side. Now it's not all clear cut. As I said, Automatic had actually copied code, even though it was, it was dead code and it was removed right away and they weren't talking about that code, but still it's not super clear cut. And also if, you know, the, the company probably wants to take a stance against against including sort of leaked material into web UIs because they don't want to be seen that they want to comply with that by having this in sort of the, the pinned sidebar. You know, if you're a company and your proprietary property is out there somewhere leaked and you kind of want to prohibit that, but then you have like a link to a web UI that says, here is how you can use the leaked thing. Just kind of looks but So I can understand why they sort of want to distance themselves, but you yeah, know, they could just say like, you know, we don't support the inclusion of sort of the leaked model into that web UI. They didn't have to go super hard after him, especially especially if it if it was wrong, right? If it then turned out, no, actually, they both just took open source code and they had actually stolen from Automatic. In any case, later, a discussion post was opened on Automatic's GitHub repository saying, Hi Automatic, this is a mod from Stability AI posting here as this is where you spend most of your time. So this is an apology, apologize for the manner which my actions hurt, the hurt they may have caused, should have reached out to you and talked to you before. And it's it's just like it's it's an apology. It's an apology saying we're sorry about this. However, the, the, the account, it, I mean, it's just called E stability. And on the Reddit post that references this apology, Automatic comments saying like, you guys are a little bit gullible. And when asked to explain, they say, the apology is a joke post by a random person who made a fake account and my response to it is also a joke. So the response was this, come on Imad, you already apologized in person over the tea yesterday. There is no need for this. So this apparently is sarcasm. Now I have heard, but also couldn't confirm that Imad actually said that yes, this was indeed him and this was indeed a real sincere apology. And to this day, I, I don't know whether it's true or not. So I can neither confirm nor deny that as they say in court, I guess. And I do believe with the sort of reversion back to community led subreddit, Automatics Web UI is again a pinned link there. However, again, you can ask yourself, you know, which side of the spectrum 
are you on? Is this an evil company that sees a competing web UI and just wants to take out the creator because it's become more popular than their own web UI? Or again, is this a company where too many people have gotten too much power and being told, you know, just do things, we'll do things in a decentralized way, we're kind of radical, so just do stuff and they just go about it with a bit too much force and a bit too little thought. Uh, it happens, you know? <laughs> I can tell stories of this. Again, I'm going to be leaning on the side of just a bit more chaos than just deliberate evilness, given also from the fact that they've never before accused Automatic of any sort of bad behavior or anything like this. Like, they weren't openly hostile to Automatic beforehand, so there's no indication that they were unhappy that this web UI was gaining a lot of traction. Now, again, you could be saying, well, this is all strategic and so on. I'm not sure. Never attribute to malice what you can attribute to incompetence. But now we get to the last bit, and that's the release of Stable Diffusion 1.5. Stable Diffusion is a model that has seen a number of updates in sort of recent weeks, and Stable Diffusion 1.5 is the next iteration in that line. Now, as you can see here, it was released on the Hogging Face Hub by not Stability AI, but by Runway ML. Now, Stable Diffusion, even though Stability AI sort of puts themselves behind behind it is actually a conglomeration by many people building on research that has been open sourced and published before all the code. It's sort of like a melting pot of different things that exist and then maybe some engineering tricks on top of that. So with these open source things, it's hard to say who actually owns what? Now, apparently, Stability had wanted to hold back version 1.5 until they are ready to release it, whereas Runway ML, which is a company that sort of makes creative tools, makes image editors and video editors that are based on AI, has want been wanting to release this. So they have released it. And after they've released it, Stability AI has requested a takedown of this published model, characterizing it as a leak of their IP. IP being intellectual property, not internet protocol in this case. So to this takedown request, Runway ML had actually decided to officially communicate on this discussion thread, saying, Chris here, CEO and co-founder of Runway. Since our founding in 2018, we've been on a mission to empower anyone to create the impossible. We're excited to share this newest version of Stable Diffusion so that we can continue delivering our mission. This version of Stable Diffusion is a continuation of the original high-resolution image synthesis with latent diffusion models work that we created and published and now more commonly referred to as stable diffusion. So stable diffusion comes from a line of published research and the researchers that had been working on this paper, at least partially, are now part of Runway ML. Stable diffusion is an AI model developed by Patrick Esser from Runway and Robin Rombach from LMU Munich. The research and code behind stable diffusion was open sourced last year. The model was released under the creative ML Open Rail M license. We confirm there has been no breach of IP as flagged and we thank Stability AI for the compute donation to retrain the original model. So essentially this is like a, it's, it's like also formulated a bit passive aggressively here, but I think Chris has every reason to do so. Essentially saying that, nope, all the code has existed. We actually authored uh, that code or part of us authored that code. It's all open source. It's all there. The model that we've retrained is actually under an open source license. So absolutely no claim to IP can be laid here to stability, saying that they essentially just provided the compute to retrain the original model and simply providing the compute does not make them the owner of the IP. Now, I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. I don't know what the exact legal situation is right here, but it does make a lot of sense to me that they essentially say like, wait, you know, all of this stuff is open source, so we can retrain this stuff just as much as you can. And it's not like they have retrained, you know, two things. It's not like Runway ML and Stability have both worked on a version 1.5 or something. It seems like Stability was the compute giver to Runway to actually develop the official 1.5 
of stable diffusion. And then as far as I can tell from the conversations and the speculation around it, again, this is all speculation, it was such that stability wanted to kind of hold back that release while Runway wanted to release it. And in the end, I guess Runway decided let's release it because you know, legally, there's nothing they can do. Side note, see this edited four days ago, a lot of these things are edited, including like the official thing right here. Now this says edit right here. But for the other ones, like I don't I, like what's where are the edits? I can't see like as much as it's cool to have public discussions on the hogging face hub, I, I really need to see how they edited stuff because you know, otherwise, how are you gonna know what happened? Like, I'll just in insert like some empty posts every now and then and then later I can go on and edit them to say anything I want. Well, in any case, uh, there is a lot of discussion following right here. However, stability never officially said anything here in this open discussion. However, as Julian says in the original post in the edit, stability legal team reached out to Hugging Face reverting the initial takedown request. Therefore, we closed this thread. So the model stays up and running under runway ML as stable diffusion version 1.5. And again, you can ask yourself, big evil company that is trying to, you know, make money, therefore keep the models to themselves, not wanting someone else to release them. Uh, maybe. On the other hand, was this kind of a rash decision to issue this takedown request when clearly, I guess they didn't really have claims. And even if it like makes them look really, really, really bad. Uh, yes, on on that too. So again, I don't really know. I also don't exactly know what happened right here. Stability AI certainly has associated themselves heavily with the name Stable Diffusion. But to what degree Stable Diffusion is actually a product of Stability AI, whether they have rights or not for giving compute, how much they've actually worked on it, all of this is quite intransparent. On top of that, a lot of this stuff, if not all, is actually open source. The code is open source the data is open source, the models uh, that serve as checkpoints maybe are open source. And therefore, you can also ask yourselves, well, if I take stable diffusion 1.5 and to train it for a bit more, can I just call it stable diffusion 1.6? Is there a trademark or something on it? Is this now a public word? All of these questions are, are completely open. As I can say, in none of these situations, stability AI has necessarily made the popular choice, whether it's like an evil or a good choice. That's, you know, a question that you might want to ask. I lean towards it was more speed, incompetence and pirate mentality that sort of made them screw up a couple of times rather than evilness. However, now comes the actual scary so this is a post from Daniel Jeffries, who is the CIO of Stable Diffusion. The post is called Why the Future of Open Source AI is so much bigger than Stable Diffusion 1.5 and why it matters to you. This is a post in part justifying why they wanted to keep to hold back the release of Stable Diffusion 1.5. Daniel Jeffries is, as I said, the CIO, and the post is very much written from the perspective of stability AI, saying all of, it, all of the time saying, we, you know, we have taken a step back at stability AI. So this is definitely speaking from the perspective of the company and not just a personal opinion. Now, if you've watched my interview with Emad, Emad had very much the attitude of, yeah, we'll just release the stuff, you know, if people want to do weird things with it, then so be it, right? In fact, fact, the tool is only useful if you can do good and bad things with it. And you know, I think the last weeks have demonstrated clearly the benefits of releasing these things to the public. Clearly, much more good has come out of this than bad has come out of it. And the bad that would have been prevented by, you know, putting the model behind an API, I, I'm not sure that that much bad has been prevented. In any case, guess why? Guess what the reasoning of Daniel Jeffries is why they wanted to hold back stable diffusion 1.5. We've heard from regulators and the general public that we need to focus more strongly on security to ensure that we're taking all the steps possible to make sure that people don't use stable diffusion for illegal purposes or hurting people. Yes, hurting people. It's like completely open AI again. Open AI is starting out. We want to be open. We want to democratize. We want to bring this to everyone. And then they're like, 
Ah, uh, but we need to make sure it's safe. Like it can't be safe. The definition of a useful tool means you can use it, which means you can also use it for bad. If you can use it for anything at all, it's possible to be used for bad. And it's the same mentality. The mentality is we know what's good for you. So we keep this to ourselves. And once we have determined what's you know, that it's appropriate, then you play plebs, you can have it. And we're going to form foundations to make it seem like we're a nonprofit. OpenAI is ruled by a nonprofit. I mean, the company itself is limited profit and it's, you know, a hold held by a nonprofit. And we are going to form committees of experts and, and you know, we're going to, everyone can take no, like, no, it's the exact same thing. Again, we know what's good for you. We are the elite we know and you know, you don't. So we can't trust you to make these decisions because think of the children. The blog post is also filled with statements such as we also won't stand by quietly when other groups leak the model in order to draw some quick press to themselves while trying to wash their hands of responsibility. That, that tell me this doesn't sound exactly like open AI like or like the journalists that came after this model and sentences like we are are committed to open source at our very core like no you're not you're you're not <laughs> like if if you believe that you first do things and then only once you've determined it's it's good for the plebs then you release it you're not committed to open source at your very core you are not of the attitude that people should have access to the tools and should have self-determination of what to do with them because before long you will discover in fact that there's not possible to release a model that is safe enough the only possibility is in fact to put it behind an api and filter the queries and filter the outputs and don't let people put bad words into that thing and you know have terms of services that prohibit people from doing anything at all except building a rainbow world around the model where nothing bad ever happens and at that point it will become useless lastly Again, you have the choice of believing obviously stability, it was just all a trick. And they're exactly the same as open AI, because clearly one of their senior officials says so the other possibility that I want to suggest to you is very much also the same as I said before, this thing grew, it grew very quickly. And it is very well possible that Imad had to hire a lot of people, including this person who has a completely opposite opinion of anything that stability AI and open AI in its real sense stands for and has just kind of let these people run loose a little bit. And all we can hope for is that either he gets a better grip on these people or that the community steps up and essentially makes Daniel Jeffries and similar people have a change of hearts. And if there is a third possibility, and then that is that regulators are making so much pressure on these people that they're essentially forced into this track. Well, in this case, I can only hope that you know stability AI finds themselves in a situation where they don't comply where they say no we are going to release stuff and we're not just going to lay down flat when the European Union or California comes in and enacts regulation just because people can do bad stuff with things we'll find a different way of distributing these things we'll find a different way of getting people access and we are not going to just stop innovating and stop releasing and we are not going to centralize power and putting everything behind an API until it's squeaky clean or no longer useful. Remember what OpenAI said about GPT-2, not 3, GPT-2. They delayed the release of the model due to its potential of abuse. Now, we look back now and we know that this is completely bogus in no there is no way GPT-2 has any serious potential for abuse. And in fact, no one has abused it. There has been not really any significant demonstration of its abuse. Now you can say good fair open AI didn't know at the moment. But also that was the point of GPT-2 was the point in time where the strategy was invented of claiming that due to security concerns, we're not going to release this to the public, we're going to keep this for us 
ourselves until we tested it. And now GPT-2 can be found on the Hugging Face Hub, but after a couple of years. After all of this, I don't know what the conclusion is. I don't know what to tell you. What I can say is that I really, really hope that stability will get back on track and regain its commitment and its outlook on being open, being community driven, being decentralized and you know, releasing their stuff. Now, I'm not saying they have any obligation to do so. They're a company. They're absolutely entitled to just say, nope, actually, we want to make money and we build our closed sourced models like that's fine. But it's just not in compliance with what they claim to be. And I very much hope that there is someone on this planet that is like they claim to be open, decentralized and sharing. Whatever happens, we'll keep a very close eye on this and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.